Hello and welcome to this week's coffee chat. How are we doing? We've got different colour mugs. We've got we've all got different colour okay. mugs this week. Yeah. It's like a like rainbow. Is that intentional? No. Um I'm colour blind, so <laughs> oh, okay. I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> so you got Is the mugs. Is mine different from yours? Yes, Jay. Well, there we go. Mine's green. We do have three different colour mugs. <laughs> we do. It's good to know. So, how was your weekend? <laughs> it was alright, yeah. Didn't do a lot this weekend. Did you a bit, did a lot in the garden. Bit of gardening. Oh, nice. What did you do in the garden? Uh, weeding and mowing. Wow, that is exciting. Uh, yeah, well, mate, you've got this to come up here because yeah. you're going to have a garden soon. Yeah. So it's yeah. exciting. Well, it's all topsoiled at the moment. Top soil. So <laughs> we're not going to have to do too much until we actually sort out yeah. what we're going to do. What you're going to do. Spring so. is a good time for all the pruning and just making the garden look a bit fresher. And Simon did do a nice few hours. So does it look fresher now? Yeah, it looks very, it's very green. fresh. It's very oh, green. Right. With the lovely, we've got some yellow daffodils highlighting. Have you still got the lights on the. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, oh, they're, they're going to be there for a while. Yeah. yeah. yeah? Do they yeah. do, do they keep through all through yeah, the year, yeah. or is it just winter yeah. and? No, they've been there all year, hoping that we can have some in the garden. Some yeah, soon. yeah, so yeah, the field with lights are still there. Great. And it was what? spring yesterday. It was our son Jonah's birthday, which is the first day of oh, spring. Oh, nice. So I love that. It wasn't as hot as I would have liked it to have been, but I think it's moving towards that. But at least we are in We're the getting spring there. season. We're getting there. We're out of winter. We're in spring. So, so we have the most random. Family Zoom chat. <laughs> oh, nice. bring everything you think of. Oh, no, really? Just Every topic was raised. It was how it would be if we were just all in the room. Yeah, that was for Jonah's birthday. Yeah. But um, it was very funny. Great. That was yeah. nice. So that's what we did this weekend. Great. So you didn't go on, didn't go to a call for this weekend? No, didn't no, we? no. We've topped out. Yeah, <laughs> We've no, got should, lots to no. Oh, yeah, I'll have to stick a picture of the uh, Megalodon to us in the, uh, in the Insta. So you put it up later on this video because he came. I've ordered this fossil you replica. Remind people. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't tell people. No, I was going to say I don't think you told. This isn't such. It's a big reveal. Oh, I thought it would should... be. I was a bit shocked then. Oh, never mind. Okay. Yeah. Oh, shall I? What shall I do? Shall I just time out on that and and bring it along next week? Yeah, I reckon yeah. you bring it next week. Yeah. I'll bring the actual. And fossil replica. Wow, that's a big reveal. Yeah. Next week. Yeah. I reckon you bring it next week. I'll bring the actual and fossil replica. Wow, that's going to keep people watching next week. Yeah. So if you like megalodons, next week tune in. <laughs> I don't even know what a megalodon well, you'll is. You'll find out next week. Well, we'll f you'll find out next week. Great! <laughs> How exciting! <laughs> yeah, keep, yeah. Your, keep your powder dry. Absolutely, yeah. Great. Next week we'll find oh, out. Someone's at the door. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's our doorbell. The bell in this uh, up here that we have in the office for when someone comes through. It's the weirdest sounding yeah, bell, isn't why. it? <laughs> it makes such a a little... I think it's just a random, isn't it? Does it go off at different yeah. things? I. It make. There's a few different. Yeah. Different ones it makes, but it's normally the da 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 Basically living in the cardboard box yeah. in, within the flat. Um, As a reference to a song that Jake's too old to, sorry, too young to, to, to know. Oh. Living in a cardboard I'm box. I'm living in a box. I'm clearly. I'm living in I'm a box. In Is that talking heads? I don't know. Yeah, so, box. anyway. <laughs> we, <laughs> we have a younger we, audience, size, so you can We've got, about, <laughs> we've got two, two of the rooms are packed floor to ceiling with boxes. We actually had, it was quite awkward, we had our... Uh, Landlord and um, the estate agent come to look round the house uh, at the I end think of she's last a landlady. week. Landlady, are they not still called landlords? It's like maybe. actors. Yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. maybe 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 um, she's a landlord lady. But, but but anyway, they came and I felt so embarrassed because they were like, "Oh, we just want to see the la uh, the estate agent just wanted to see how everything is so they can put it back on the market and everything." I was just like, I don't want to see anything because there really are boxes Everywhere. floor to ceiling. So, yeah, but Friday we move. Have you labelled so them what room they're going to I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah, we have. Yeah. We have. Emma's very organised with yeah, this all. Sure I mean, it's all very much ready to go. We've actually written out an exact plan for timings of Saturday when who's doing what room and when it's being done and all of that. Wow, so yeah. we're, we're very much um, on our way. And, mm. and then you've got us our roads not open from yet. on Saturday. So, yeah. <laughs> Did you hear that? Our, our road's not even yeah. open yet. So that's... Um, so you're flying in. That's fun. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so we're hoping that's going to be open by Friday. <laughs> so yeah, we look forward to that. Look forward to when things do open up, being able to have people come and being able to build community there. And yeah, we really look forward to that. So... Friday can't come soon enough. 
Excellent. And by the time this comes out, it'll probably be like two days yeah. to Friday. True. So yeah, true. You'll be jumping around the office yeah. with excitement. Exactly. I really will be. So yeah. It's Sunday. It's a big milestone buying your first car. Yeah, it is a big milestone. It is a big milestone. Sunday. <laughs> Back <laughs> we, to Sunday. We had Chris Izzard speak to us about worry. And yeah. he started by speaking a bit about um, what is worry and how that's increased a little bit during... Um, during COVID and coming of out of people. COVID for a lot of people, actually there's a lot of anxiety around that. Um, but he did distinguish worry into two different forms. Do you want to explain a little bit about that? Well, first of all, I thought he described that he was vulnerable about his own worry and anxiety. Mm-hmm. I thought the fact he shared about his own sort of anxiety during COVID, I thought was really powerful. Uh, yeah, I've not heard those two phrases. I think, was it solvable worry? And solvable worry and floating worries. Floating mm-hmm. worries. I've not heard those two terms before, but I thought the way they categorised so my understanding was solvable worry is something you can do something about. Yeah, as it says on the tin. It's solvable. Um, floating worry is something that's kind of out there and you can't really pin it down and mm-hmm. you have to deal with it differently. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And I, I think that's that's a term used in like things like counselling and, and yeah. stuff like that as well. So it's actually, it was really interesting for him to, to bring that up. How do you think COVID has affected worry for people as a whole and, and why? Well, I think because there's so much you can't do with COVID, and so so little effect you can have apart from mm. staying, you know, stay indoors, you know, wear a mask, save lives, da da da. But it's a lot you can't solve. There's so. a lot you can't solve, yeah. isn't it? So I think that floating sense, that sense of mm. pervading anxiety, is quite isn't quite major in COVID. So and it does tap into losing control. I yeah, I was going to say this, this. It's losing control, isn't it? Completely. Basically, and I think that's what we've all experienced on such a mass scale. And mm. I know people have reacted differently and some people have gone through it and they won't come, come out with anxiety. But I know from me talking to lots of people who've never had anxiety before, have now experienced anxiety and feel that they're carrying that into this new season. Mm. Some people who had anxiety are now a lot worse. And so we are gonna have a whole range, I think, of people who um, are worrying or carrying anxiety and we need to work through that as a, as a community yeah. of people and allow people to be at different stages and. And I think, you know, what, what Chris said about being a community and being kind to each other and mm. just allowing that to to gradually get better for people as the world emerges mm. into some kind of normality. Yeah. So. Do you think there's going to have to be some something in place in each of us being quite intentional as we, as we come out of lockdown of just being very much aware that there will be this anxiety around and other people might be feeling more anxious than us or yeah. might not be feeling yeah. anxious at all. Do you think that's going to change the way that we? it almost takes us time to get back to usual? Even even if we said 26th of June or whatever it is, or mm. 22nd or whenever, yeah. that everything's completely normal. It certainly won't In each it. individual, mm. actually, there will be these anxieties, these worries that won't be there before. So do you think there's a we're going to have to deal with things slightly different. I think we've got to talk about it a lot more maybe than we used to, because I think we all, we've all known that anxiety is around, but this has made it a very real thing. And I say we've got to keep the conversation alive and allow people to express their worries and concern without judgment, with grace, and, and be their friend and, mm. and, and almost like hold their hand through the journey of, could be for the rest of this year and beyond, where people are just you know having to work through um, different levels of fear and anxiety and and as they gain control with things that they're allowed to do I think yeah it's just it's uncharted waters isn't it yeah. I think we've got to keep talking about it mm. with each other um, as, a, as a church community and friends and yeah not let people mm. just and, and notice people when you think they are struggling you know not just yeah you know just just be aware that somebody might be being quiet or um, you know, actually notice right. notice something um slightly on this topic slightly off it that that one of your sons been doing about getting people getting men that are, that are yeah. struggling yeah. mentally Jonah. to do you want to yeah. just explain a little bit about what he's doing i think he's just trying to put a shout out to guys just to say if you struggle at all with mental yeah. health mm. uh, trying to break the taboos around you know mental health uh, and sort of men generally can struggle in silence so mm. uh, when he was down in portsmouth and up here he's just trying to put a shout out to guys to say look if you want to connect and support each other in that, then mm. it's okay. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, he's been uh, really proud of what he does with that, really. Mm. I think it's a very powerful thing to do. Uh, and it sort of does break that taboo uh, where men particularly don't talk about you know, how they're feeling or some of the struggles they're having. So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's great that he's doing that. And hopefully, 
more of that will come out of this time of COVID. More people will begin to talk about how they really feel, you know, what yeah. they're really struggling with. And I think uh, we'll be better community support if we can do that. Mm. Yeah. And I think men do need to be encouraged to do that maybe more. I think is a male suicide the biggest killer? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah. I think it's 25 to 50 yeah. or something like that. The yeah. biggest killer. And it's something that you don't like to talk about, but it's, it's real. And mm. I think COVID has made that, again, the numbers have, have shot up. And so we need to be really encouraging men to it's okay not yeah. to be okay and to talk yeah. about it so we want to as a as a church community mm. be doing that and keeping that conversation mm. very much alive final question before we finish mm -hmm. this week's coffee chat where does god fit in mm. to this how where does god fit in with this anxiety and worry and, and how we go about it jake the master of the big question um <laughs> i mean for me how how god fits into my life and my anxiety it's a place to go to Mm -hmm. you know when I have otherwise it's like you have anxiety and what do you do with it and I know there are different things you can do and you know we're all for counselling and, and being on medication but for me there's another part of it where I can go and be in the yeah. presence of God and allow yeah. him to settle me allow him to bring a peace that you know maybe I can't get from other things so it's just another a comforting thing mm. for me to be able to say Father God I have no idea where this is going or I don't yeah. feel in control, but I know you are. And so mm. it's, it's hanging it somewhere, which may even bring 20% peace, uh, but it's another part of the... Um, yeah, and I think I'm going to touch into that, this with the Emerge series more mm. over the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, I think it's the whole living living in the mystery and the in-between, you know, not really... Because essentially life is a lot of not knowing in reality. If you yeah. jump back, we don't know a lot about what's going to happen. So I think... Uh, God gives us that anchor, like Keely said, but also we, we, we walk with God in the mystery of the in-between. You know, sometimes when something's, one thing's gone, another thing hasn't yet birthed, we live in that in-between time. Mm. And it can be like that with anxiety or, or, with, or with loss or any kind of transition, really. You know, we live in that, we're constantly in transition, uh, even though we like security, we like things to be stable. We're constantly transitioning in life mm. from one phase to another, from one season to another. And so I think... Um, God's a God who's dynamically involved in that. He's with us. He's walking with us in that. He's not sort of, he's not waiting for us to arrive somewhere. You know, he's actually transitioning yeah. with us. And I think so. We'll explore more of that uh, over the next few weeks after each step. After we go through this emerge series and hopefully help people have some tools and understanding how God is with us in the journey. You know, in the anxiety, in the in between. Great. That's exciting. Yeah. Well, that will do for this week's coffee chat. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on Sunday. And next week. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> and you will have moved house. And I will be watching it in a new house. Absolutely. Well, bye. Bye. bye.